The Tigers started off not very impressively against a Wofford team. They went to Tulane. They weren't impressive there. They started coming out of it when they traveled up to Kentucky. And then all of a sudden, things began to fall into place. They beat Georgia. They had a great game against North Carolina that they picked up a victory in. And they rolled all over Wake Forest that year and wrapped it all up with a victory over South Carolina. Oh, what the heck? All of a sudden, they're undefeated and sitting there in number two. Number two, mind you, their season has ended. But Pitt upset Penn State, and the Tigers were elevated to number one, and then history was made. It was a warm and humid night at the legendary Orange Bowl Stadium in Miami, Florida, January 1st, 1982, when top-ranked Clemson played fourth-ranked Nebraska for the mythical national championship for the 1981 season. The Tigers, led by 33-year-old head coach Danny Ford, entered the game with a perfect 11-0 record, including a 13-3 victory over second-ranked Georgia. Earlier in the day, Georgia had lost to Pitt in the Sugar Bowl, and third-rated Alabama had fallen to Texas in the Cotton Bowl to set up this epic struggle for number one between two teams that had reached the pinnacle of college football with dominant defenses and powerful running games. The ticket demand was the greatest in the 48-year history of the Orange Bowl, and the weather could not have been better. More than 50,000 Clemson fans were estimated to be among the 80,000 plus at this classic matchup. The Cornhuskers won the opening toss and elected to receive. Clemson defended the East goal where a six mile an hour wind gently blew. Nigerian born kicker freshman Donald Igwebike kicked off to the eight yard line where Nebraska's Mike Rogier fielded the kick on one bounce and returned it 17 yards to the 25. On the game's first play, I back Roger Craig takes the pitch from quarterback Mike Maurer and goes for six to the 31. Jeff Bryant makes the tackle for Clemson. On second and four, fullback Phil Bates goes off right guard for two more. Defensive tackle Dan Benish makes the stop for the Tigers, setting up the first key third down of the game. It's third and two from the Nebraska 33. Our options left. Middle guard William Devane penetrates past Nebraska All-American center Dave Remington. Grabs Maurer's leg, causing an errant hitch to Craig. Danny Triplett is in Craig's face immediately. Devane outbattles several of his teammates to recover the loose football on the 28-yard line. On the Tigers' first offensive play, Homer Jordan rolls right and completes a three-yard pass to tight end Bubba Diggs. It's second and seven from the 25, and Cliff Austin gets the handoff and goes left for eight yards and a first down at the Nebraska 17. Sammy Sims makes the stop for the Cornhuskers. Fullback Kevin Mack can't find any running room on first down, gaining maybe a foot against the Nebraska defense. Jordan rolls back to his right on second down, can't find a receiver, throws it safely out of bounds. It's third and 10 for the Tigers from the 17. Jordan drops back, tries to come back left, but he trips over Mack and goes down at the 27 for a loss of nine. He was looking for All-American receiver Perry Tuttle, but the Huskers had him double teamed, and he was covered near the end zone. Coach Ford calls on his freshman kicker, Igwe Bike, for a 44-yard field goal attempt. His kick has the distance easily, but it barely stays good past the right upright, giving the Tigers a 3-0 lead with 11.39 to go in the first quarter. That kick would have been good from as far as 65 yards out. Igwe BK kicks off again to Rogier, who takes this one off the goal line. During the season, Rogier returned 193 yards for a touchdown, and he's a threat to go the distance any time he touches it. Rogier brings it back up the middle to the 31 before he's tripped up. Rogier stays in the game for Craig at eye back, and he gets the handoff from Maurer and goes seven to the 38 before left corner Hollis Hall can stop him there. On second and three, Rogier goes straight ahead close to the first down marker, but just shy. Jeff Bryant stops him for the Tigers. It's Rogier for the third straight time. He gets toppled by the Clemson defense, but he flips forward for two and a first down at the 42. For the fourth straight play, it's Nebraska calling on Rogier. He goes left and gets two more to the 44 before All-American Jeff Davis hits him hard. Davis entered the game with 161 tackles, most of any Tiger player. Nebraska's high-powered offense, averaging 431 yards a game, goes airborne for the first time. Power play actions to Rozier, rolls right, 
and completes a pass to Todd Brown in the Tiger 43. Triplett comes across from his linebacking spot to knock down Brown. William Refrigerator Perry anticipates the snap count a fraction too soon. He jumps off sides, giving Nebraska first and five from the Clemson 38. Nebraska goes back to Rozier, this time to the left for three more, where he's hit by defensive end Bill Smith. He's hit hard, but falls to the 35. Fullback Bates gets the short yardage call, and he responds with a four-yard run to the 31. Richardson makes the tackle for Clemson. The ball is marked on the 30. Remington snaps when Clemson jumps. It's another offsides penalty, moving it to the 25. It's first and five. Maurer pitches to Rozier, who lost a wobbler. The eyeback pass to Anthony Steele's in the end zone for the touchdown. Steele's split defenders Terry Kennard and Anthony Rose for the score. Kevin Seibel adds the extra point for the score. It's an eight play, 69 yard drive to give Nebraska a 7-3 lead with 6.43 left in the first quarter. Seibel kicks off. It goes a yard deep into the end zone. Tuttle takes it and wisely decides to take the touchback. Nebraska is offsides, forcing a second Seibel kick. The penalty proves costly as Tuttle takes this kick on the one and races back to the 39 yard line. Good for a return of 38 yards before Rodney Lewis stops him for the Cornhuskers. It's first and 10 from the 39 for the Clemson offense. Trailing for the first time, it's 7-3. to three. Austin goes left on first down, but he can get only three before being stopped by Henry Wechter. It's second and seven, and Jordan goes back to the air. He looks right, but his pass to Jerry Gilliard is just off target, setting up third down and seven. Jordan goes back to Gilliard. It's complete, but it's a short gain, netting only two yards before Nebraska safety Jeff Krejci wrestles him down, setting up the first punting situation of the night for either team. Dale Hatcher comes on to punt from the 44-yard line. It's a good one, 43 yards, and Nebraska's all-purpose star Irving Fryer has to fair catch this boomer on his own 13-yard line. Craig goes right, doesn't get much before Jeff Davis knocks him down. There is a penalty on the field, holding against the Cornhuskers, which moves it back to the seven-yard line. Mauer play actions and passes to his fullback for six yards. Davis again makes the tackle for the Tigers, making it second and 10 from the original line of scrimmage, the 13-yard line. The Cornhuskers go to Ibach Craig for three, and once again, Davis is there to stop him for the Tigers. Nebraska was illegally in motion, but the Tigers decline making it third and seven from the 16. Nebraska tries to pass again, but this time the Tigers are blitzing and safety Tim Childers is all over Maurer, trapping him back in the five yard line for an 11 yard loss, making it fourth and 18. Grant Campbell comes on for his first punt of the night. His 37 yard kick is fair caught by Billy Davis on the 42 yard line. It's first and 10 from the Cornhusker 42. And the Tigers go for it all on first down. Jordan drops back and throws for Tuttle in the end zone. It's knocked away by free safety Jeff Krejci to prevent the touchdown. Clemson goes back to the air again as Jordan rolls left. He throws to Jeff Stockstill. It's incomplete, but there's a flag on the field. Interference on Nebraska. It's a 16-yard penalty and a first down for the Tigers at the Cornhusker 26. The interference is on Krejci. Chuck McSwain is in a tailback, and he gets his first carry. He is belted down by the Cornhusker line, led by noseman Jeff Merrill. No gain. Jordan keeps it this time on the option, going left for five yards to the 21-yard line. It's third and a long five. Jordan rolls right, can't find an open receiver, tucks it under, and fights his way back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. Jimmy Williams makes the stop for the Huskers. Coach Ford calls on his great kicker, Igwe BK, again. He is perfect from 37 yards out to narrow the lead to one. It's 7-6 Nebraska with 1.03 to go in the first quarter. Igwe BK kicks this one off two yards deep into the end zone and steals downs it for the touchback. It's first and 10 for the Cornhuskers at the 20-yard line. Rozier is back in for Craig as Tom Osborne continues to alternate his two standout eye backs. Rozier gets the call, and Refrigerator Perry brings him down at the 25. It's another penalty on the Huskers, this one for holding, which moves it back to the 10-yard line. It's first and 20 for Nebraska from there. 
Nebraska goes back to Rozier and he gets five before Bill Smith brings him down. It's second and 15 on the final play of the first quarter. The Cornhuskers go to the screen pass. Maurer hits tight end Jamie Williams. He battles for a couple of yards before he's slammed hard by Hall. Nebraska is guilty of yet another penalty, this time for clipping. The penalty moves the ball all the way back to the six-yard line. That's the end of the quarter. Nebraska leads 7-6. to six. Second quarter begins. Nebraska is backed up in its own six-yard line, facing second and 24. The Cornhuskers decide to play it safe on first down, giving it to fullback Bates, who finds a hole and picks up seven to the 13 before being stopped once again by Davis. It's third and 17 from the 13. Maurer drops back, can't find a receiver, and escapes the pressure for an 11-yard gain to the 24. He's driven back by Davis and Triplett on a hard hit there. It's fourth and seven. Campbell is back to punt, and he launches a monster shot. It drives Billy Davis back to his own 15. He fights back to the 24 for a nine-yard return. Campbell's punt is good for 66 yards. Jordan brings the Tigers to the line. It's first and 10 from the 24. The Tigers open this drive with yet another first down pass. Jordan hits Tuttle on a quick hitter for eight to the 32. McSwain gets the pitch on second and two and bounces left for five more and a first down at the 37. Kretschy is credited with a tackle. It's first and 10 from the 37. Jordan drops back again on first down, can't find a receiver, tucks it under and goes upfield for six more to the 43. Wetcher on the stop for the Huskers. Fullback Jeff McCall follows the Clemson offensive line push for three to the 46. It's third and one from there. The Tigers call in McCall again, and he delivers two more yards and a first down at the 48. Linebacker Steve McWhorter stops him for the Huskers. On first and 10, Jordan looks for Frank Magwood and just misses him at the Nebraska 40. It's second down now. McSwain gets the handoff, but Henry Wachter is in the backfield and drops McSwain for a two-yard loss back to the 46. Clemson faces third and 12 from its own 46. Jordan is flushed out to his left. He throws deep for Magwood. Nebraska Sims tips it in the air. Magwood keeps his concentration and snares the tip ball on the 12-yard line. It's a 42-yard gain and a first down for the Tigers. Jordan starts the option to his left, darts back to his right, knifes his way to the 10 for two more. Nebraska's Tom Gadowski is there to stop him. It's second and eight from the 10. Jordan goes for six, but this time Nebraska is ready to make the big play as cornerback Rick Lindquist steps in front of Tuttle and makes the interception. It appeared Tuttle had the TD catch and Lindquist wrestled it away when they rolled over one another. Nebraska takes over with nine minutes left in the second quarter at its own 20 yard line. On first down, Maurer pitches back to Rozier. He gets three to the 23. Hollis Hall makes the first hit on Steeles. On second and seven, the Huskers option left. Rozier is knocked down hard by Benish. It's another Nebraska clip, and this one moves the ball back to the 12, making it second and 18. Maurer swings it to Rozier and he explodes back to the left. Hall makes a saving tackle on the 23, setting up third and seven. Maurer hands to Bates and he's popped hard by Joe Glenn. The ball flies in the air and the ACC Player of the Year, Jeff Davis, recovers for the Tigers at the Nebraska 28. It's Jeff's fourth fumble recovery of the year and sets the Tiger offense up with great field position. Jordan passes to Tuttle in the right flat for seven yards to the 20. Lindquist makes the tackle there. It's second and three for the Tigers. Austin is back in the game and he takes Jordan's handoff and goes up the middle for five and a first down at the Nebraska 15. Steve Damkroger on the tackle for the Huskers. Clemson goes back up the middle, this time to fullback Mack as he runs hard to the 10. Damkroger is on the tackle again. Second and five for the Tigers from the 10. Mack hits the middle, and Nebraska knocks the ball loose on the nine. After unpiling the two teams, the official rules Clemson's ball on the nine. It's third and four from the nine. Clemson splits its backs. Jordan drops straight back and keeps on the quarterback draw. 
He gets four and a first down on the five yard line. Mack hammers in the Nebraska middle again. He lunges to the two. It's second and goal from the three. Austin takes the pitch from Jordan, goes right untouched into the end zone for a Clemson touchdown. The Clemson right side of the line just caves in the heralded Nebraska front. It's 12-7 Tigers, and Coach Ford says go for two. Jordan looks for Tuttle for two, but Jimmy Williams forces Homer to underthrow Perry. The two-point attempt is no good. There's 3.15 left in the first half, and Clemson leaves it 12-7. Igwe BK kicks off to Rozier four yards deep in the end zone, and the Nebraska star wisely chooses not to bring it out. Maurer keeps on the option and darts back up the field to the 25. Smith stops him there. It's second and five for the Huskers. Roger Craig is back in at eye back. He takes Maurer's pitch and high steps it to the 38 for a first down. Kennard wrestles him down there. Nebraska goes back to Craig on the pitch to the left. Anthony Rose hits him high and brings down Craig on the 47. It's second down and less than one for Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers are on the move as the first half clock becomes a factor. Maurer takes the snap, gives to Craig, who's met by Triplett, who drives him back for no gain. And actually, it's a small loss. It's third and one again. This time, the Huskers pitch to Craig going left. He gets eight before being hit hard by corner Rod McSwain. It's first down Nebraska at the Clemson 45. Coach Osborne feels he has the reverse set up and he goes to steals on first and 10, but he trips back on the 50 for a loss of five. It's second and 10 with 147 left in the half. Bauer drops straight back. He's pressured by Perry and throws into the ground. Craig is near the ball. Third and 15 now. Bauer goes for it all, throwing the post pattern. Brown battles Hall for the ball. Brown almost catches it on the juggle, but it falls harmlessly to the turf, forcing a punt. But Nebraska fakes it. Clemson is ready for it, stopping the play for no gain. The Huskers are illegally in motion, but the Tigers decline, taking over at its own 49, with 121 left in the first half. Jordan hands to Austin, and he gets over the 50 to the Nebraska 48. There's less than a minute to go, and Clemson only has one timeout left. Jordan drops back, can't find anyone, sprints to the sidelines. He gets four to the Husker 44. It's third and three. Jordan passes to Tuttle, but Nebraska's Lewis hits him hard to cause the incompletion. It's fourth and three, and Coach Ford says go for it. Jordan rolls right, keeps for a first down to the 38. Gadowski tackles him there. There's 26 seconds left. Jordan's first down throw is out of bounds. The clock is down to 21 seconds. Jordan drops back, but he's trapped for a four-yard loss by Godowski. Clemson calls time with only two seconds left. Igwe BK comes on for a 58-yard field goal try. Tony Peretti spots it down, and here comes the kick. A Nebraska defender seems to tip it. It's way short, and the Tigers leave the Orange Bowl field with a 12-7 halftime advantage. Third quarter. Nebraska Seibel tees it up to start the second half and it kicks it through the uprights for the touchback. Jordan leaves the offense on the field for the first series of the second half. On first down, he gives to McCall, who goes for three before being stopped by Jimmy Williams. McSwain is in a tailback, and on second down, he goes left. Breaks free for 10 yards and a first down at the Clemson 33. That's the longest running play so far for the Tigers. Lewis forces him out of bounds for the Cornhuskers. The Tigers go back to pass on first down, but Homer's throw for Tuttle on the right sideline is overthrown out of bounds, making it second and 10 for Clemson. Max Wayne gets the call up the middle, but there's no running room there. Jimmy Williams drops in for a two yard loss. The Tigers are called for holding. That moves it back to the 23 yard line. It's second and 20. Jordan gives him a call up the middle for four before he's down by Nebraska's Brent Evans at the 27. Third and 16 now for the Tigers. Jordan breaks containment and scrambles up the field for an eight yard gain, but there's another flag on the field. Clemson is penalized for clipping, moving the Tigers back again, this time to the 20. It's third and 23. Jordan passes for Gilliard on the left side. He gets eight of the yards back before Nebraska's Dam Kroger tackles him hard. Hatcher comes in to punt. He hits a beauty, a 51 yarder to the Nebraska 21. 
Alan Lede fields it and returns 12 yards to the 33, where Dale Swing stops him there. Nebraska takes over with 12-19 to go in the third. Fullback Bates takes the handoff on first down, but gets only a yard before Benish tackles him for the Tigers. Second and nine, and Maurer decides to test the airway. His pass is tipped to the line by Smith and nearly intercepted by Rose. It's so close that the officials rule it a trap. Rozier is back in for Craig, and he takes the third down pitch and fights for four yards. Not nearly enough for a first, as Smith is credited with a stop. Campbell gets off a 38-yard punt. Billy Davis takes it on his own 24, but he has no running room. Mark Moravec makes the tackle for Nebraska. It's time for the Clemson offense to exert its ball control ability. Jordan starts out by bootlegging to his left and passing complete to Tuttle on the left sidelines for 12 and a first down at the 37-yard line. Jordan gives to McSwain on the left side for a pair. Clemson is flagged for illegal motion, but the Cornhuskers decline the penalty. Second and eight from the 39. Jordan goes left. Which is wildly, but McSwain recovers for a three-yard gain out to the 42. It's now a crucial third and five for the Tigers from their own 42. Jordan looks for Tuttle, finds him, and hits him. He spins free for an 18-yard gain to the Cornhusker 42. Kretschy forces him out of bounds there. McCall powers his way to the Nebraska 36. It's a six-yard pickup on first down, making it second and four for the Tigers. Lindquist makes the stop for Nebraska. Clemson calls on McCall again, and he bowls for four more, and a first at the Nebraska 32. Homer rolls again, finding his tight end Diggs open for a seven-yard pickup to the 25-yard line. Tony Felici is there to make the tackle for the Cornhuskers. McSwain breaks free for nine more, and another Tiger first down. This one moving the change to the 15-yard line. The Cornhuskers are reeling and trying to stop it by calling a timeout with 8.05 to go in the third quarter. It's first and 10 from the 16 after the timeout break, and the Tigers continue their march. McCall goes right up the middle for 12 more, and a first and goal at the four. Chris Van Norman stops Jeff there. Jordan gives to McSwain on first and goal, but Felici is there to bring him down on the three. It's second and goal. Jordan pitches out right, but Nebraska's defense is there led by Jimmy Williams, and the Huskers drop McSwain for a big loss back to the 13-yard line. Now it's third and goal from the 13. Jordan looks for Tuttle, and he leaps up over Nebraska's Allen Lede. He jumps, catches it, and it's a touchdown for the Tigers. The pass from Jordan to Tuttle caps a 75-yard, 12-play drive that took 4.47 off the clock. Bob Halling comes in to kick the extra point, giving the Tigers a 19-7 lead with 6-12 left in the third quarter. Iguebique kicks to the goal line, but Rogier brings it back. He returns it to the 30 before the Tigers can stop him there. Nebraska opens this drive with a pass, but Maurer misfires to Brown, leaving it second and 10 from the 30. Rogier goes wide right on second down, but Hedden and Davis are there for the Tigers, stopping him for a two-yard gain. Third and eight now from the 32. Maurer throws for Brown. He bobbles it as three Clemson defenders led by Triplett are there to help him drop it. It forces yet another Nebraska punt. Campbell punts it to the Clemson 31 where Davis gathers it in. He breaks free and races all the way to the Nebraska 22-yard line. A magnificent return for Clemson. Irving Fryer finally stops Davis there. The momentum is clearly on the side of the Tigers now. Nebraska's defense is called on to stop the Tiger surge. Austin takes the first down pitch. Goes right for three before being stopped by Merrill on the 19-yard line. It's second and seven. Austin hits off right guard, but Merrill is there again, dropping him for a three-yard loss. There's bad news for the Tigers. Clemson is flagged for holding, moving the ball all the way back to the 31. Undaunted by the setback, Jordan finds Gilliard for 16 yards. Williams stops Jerry three yards shy of a first. It's third and three for Clemson from the 15. Jordan starts left, can't find anyone open, and is caught for a five-yard loss back at the 20. Felici is credited with a stop. It's fourth and eight, and Igwe Bike comes in for another field goal try. 
Peretti is holding at the 26, and the kick sails true from 36 yards out for another three points for the Tigers. It's Clemson 22, Nebraska 7, with 2.36 to go in the third quarter. The pressure shifts to the potent Nebraska offense and the equally gifted Clemson defense. The national title hangs in the balance. Igwe Bike kicks deep, and the Cornhuskers try a little razzle-dazzle on the return. Steeles takes the kick and throws across the field on a lateral to Rogier. It doesn't fool the Tigers, who stop Rogier on the 15-yard line. Mandel Arrington makes the tackle for the Tigers. Nebraska again tries to pass on first down, and Johnny Rembert knocks down the attempt from Maurer to Brown. Rembert had a clear track for six if he could have just hung on. The Cornhuskers give to Craig on second down and a little reverse action, and Roger goes to his right for nine to the 24. Glenn stops him a yard shy of a first. Craig gets the call again on third, and he batters his way for four to the 28 and a first down. Bryant gets the tackle for Clemson. Fullback Bates moves ahead for five more on first down before Benish can bring him down on the 33. Mauer options to his left on second down and picks up four more to the 37. Davis stops him a yard short of a first. It's third and one, and time for one final play of the third quarter. Craig goes right for three and a first down at the 40. Once again, Davis makes the stop for the Tigers. And that's it for the third quarter. A good one for Clemson. The Tigers take a 22-7 lead into the fourth quarter, but Nebraska is on the move and wrestling momentum away from Clemson. Fourth quarter. The Cornhuskers continue their drive to open the fourth quarter with a first at its own 40. Maurer looks for his tight end, Jamie Williams, and connects with him on an 11-yard gain to the 49. Rembert stops him there. Nebraska tries its second gadget pass of the game. The first work for a touchdown, but Irving Fryer's pass to tight end Mitch Crank is knocked away by Hall. It's a great play by the Tiger corner. Nebraska goes back to Craig, and he picks up six off the left side before Davis makes yet another tackle. It's third and four from the Clemson 43. Maurer passes for it, and his pass is caught, but out of bounds, making it fourth down for the Huskers. Nebraska uses its second time out of the half. Osborne elects to send in Campbell to punt. Clemson is 13-35 away from a national title. Campbell's punt is only 24 yards and is down at the 19-yard line. Jordan keeps it on first down, going left for five before Felici stops him at the 24. Second and five from there for the Tigers. Matt gets the call, bulls his way for six and a first down at the 30. Dan Kroger stops him there. Clemson goes back to the air, but Homer's throw for Tuttle is badly overthrown on first down, leaving it at second and 10 from the 30. Jordan looks for Kendall Alley on second down, but his throw comes up short. It's third and 10 for the Tigers from there. The Tigers play it safe on third down. Pitching to Austin, but the Nebraska defense led by Felici is there to stop him for no gain. It's fourth and 10 from the 30. Hatcher is called on to punt, and he gets off a 39-yarder. Irving Fryer has to fair catch him for the Cornhuskers back in his own 31. Nebraska takes over with 12.05 to go in the game. Bauer goes airborne on first down. He looks for Brown, and Jeff Davis nearly intercepts for the Tigers. Second and 10, and Maurer keeps left, but is brought down, but not until he gets six to the 37. Hall stops him there. Rozier is back in at eye back, and he gets the call on third and four. Rozier goes wide left for eight to the 45. Jeff Suttle stops him, but the Huskers have a first down. Nebraska continues to go to Rozier, and he breaks up the middle for nine more to the Clemson 46. Brown gets the tackle, but it's second and only one. Maurer passes on second down, but Hedden is there to break it up for the Tigers, knocking it loose from Fryer. There's 10-18 left, and once again, it appears the Huskers are going to the halfback pass. But Rogier sees a seam, scrambles up the middle for eight and a first down. At the Clemson 38, Smith stops him there. Rogier batters his way for 12 as he goes right up the middle of the 26. Richardson keeps him from going the distance, it's the Tigers' defense trying to hold on now. It's first and 10 from the 26. Craig replaces Rogier. He goes wide left and in for a touchdown. 
It's a 26-yard sprint for Craig and Osborne. Doesn't hesitate to go for two. However, the Huskers are whistled for delay of game, which moves it back to the eight. The Cornhuskers still go for two. Craig gets the call again. He goes wide left again and in for two. It makes it 22-15. There's 9-15 left in the game, and the momentum pendulum continues to swing Nebraska's way. Seibel kicks it into the end zone two yards deep, but Tuttle decides to bring it out. It's an ill-advised decision as Nebraska corners him at the 12-yard line. Clemson's offense needs a drive, but on first down, McSwain finds no running room. He gets only one as Merrill makes the stop. Second and nine from the 13. Jordan rolls left looking for Tuttle, but his throw is short, making it third down. Nebraska's Jimmy Williams is there on third down to stop Jordan again for no gain. It's fourth and nine from the 13. And the Tigers desperately need a booming kick from Hatcher to switch the field position. Hatcher delivers a 50-yard punt to Fryer, who has to signal for a fair catch at his own 37-yard line. What a crucial play by Hatcher. Rozier is back in for Craig. And he gets the ball on first down, going up the middle for three before Bryant can harness him there. There's a flag and another holding. This one on Nebraska, which brings it back to the 33. That officially makes it first and 14 from the 33. Rogier gets four of the yards back on first down as Bryant brings him down again. It's Rogier again on second down. He goes off the left side for six more. Hedden stops him there. It's now a critical third and four. Maurer pitches errantly for Craig. The officials rule Maurer down on the 40. It's a loss of three. Nebraska faces a fourth and seven and send Campbell into punt. The punting duel between Hatcher and Campbell continues. The Nebraska punt goes 60 yards into the end zone. Clemson will take over on its own 20 with 524 left in the game. It's time for the Clemson offense to play the clock game. McCall goes up the middle on first down and moves it to the 22. Dam Kroger tackles him there. It's second and eight for the Tigers as the clock continues to tick. Jordan gives to McCall again, and the fullback goes off right tackle for five more, making it third and three from the 27. It's a critical third down situation, and for the third straight play, McCall takes it from Jordan. He goes off the right side for four more, and a first down at the 31. McSwain gets the call on first down. It goes up the middle of the Nebraska defense for four more to the 35. Now it's time to give it back to McCall, and he gets two more to the 37. Clemson faces yet another possession down. Homer keeps it himself this time, finds an opening, breaks free for a 23-yard gain, and a first down all the way to the Nebraska 40. It's the longest play from scrimmage for the Tigers tonight. A delay of game penalty moves Clemson back to the Nebraska 45. Jordan gives him a call again. There's no running room. He gets a yard, but the clock has wound down to 143, and Nebraska uses its final timeout. With time back in play, Jordan keeps left, darts for four back to the original line of scrimmage. It's third and 10. McSwain takes the pitch from Jordan, but he can get only a yard up the middle. More importantly, the clock continues its march. Clemson takes a delay of game penalty, which moves it back to the 44. Coach Ford opts not to punt as the clock is down to 17 seconds. Instead, he asks Jordan to scramble around and use up as much clock as he can. Homer loses two, but eliminates 11 seconds in doing so. Nebraska takes over at its own 46 with six seconds to go. One last chance for the Cornhuskers. Bauer launches a long pass for Brown on the left side. It goes to the 15, but Hedden is there to bat it down. And the celebration begins for the 1981 National Champions on the first day of 1982.
We start off our first game, we're not thinking national championship. The only thing we're thinking is restoring the program back to where it belongs. And, and we took it one game at a time. And, and uh, we performed the weekend and week out. We had a great defense. We had a lot of great players. We had great leadership. We had a great game plan. The coaches were doing what they were supposed to do. And so we played one game at a time. And before you knew it, you know, we beat a couple teams, you know, in the top 10. Uh, we beat South Carolina. And the next thing you know, we're playing for all the marbles. And uh, we end up winning the national championship. And, and I tell you what, uh, it is still impacting my life today to be a part of uh, such a great team and such a great opportunity for Clemson University. And not just, you know, it wasn't just Clemson University, and that was one of the neat things about it. It was, we were representing South Carolina. We were representing the ACC, which, you know, a lot of people were saying we were the basketball conference. So uh, I believe that that night, we put Clemson on the map in a way uh, that they were never on the map before.